Hi guys, I'm Uma and welcome to lecture 14 in the Kudamort Discord server. Um, this talk is called A Practitioner's Guide to Triton. And um, um, very briefly, who am I? Well, I'm Uma from Germany. Um, I actually used to be a management consultant until uh, October. Um, then decided I want to do technical AI work, so I started. I'm doing um, open source contributions. I've, I've done many contributions to stuff like Langchain and then GPT engineer, where I also became a, became maintainer for a while, and then I uh, decided I want to do more even more technical stuff, so I decided um, and I started to contribute to Hugging Face Diffusers and I've done their, um, I've done their st stuff like Controlnet XS um, Block Loras and you know, st stuff like that. Um, also on the right side of the Green, yeah, <laughs> is um, you know, there's this little dinosaur, uh, dinosaur, and that's my Discord and GitHub. Um, so if you see that, it's me, <laughs> and also there's my Twitter. Okay, let's get into the talk. So, um, the talk is called A, Pract A Practitioner's Guide to Triton. Um, we will talk about actually why would you decide to use it and when would you decide to use it, um, how to write Triton kernels, what its programming model is, i.e. how does Triton want you to think about how to structure your, your code. And that's all the basics we need um, because then we can start to uh, dabble into actual code we will start very easily um, by c copying a, a tensor and then progressively get uh, um, do more complicated stuff um, until at the end we get into actually not th not that easy um, uh, tasks um, like writing a actual fast matrix a matrix multiplication kernel. After that <clears throat> we'll <laughs> we'll do some benchmarking and some auto uh, and some auto tuning to see if we are fast and how we might make it even faster. Cool. Um let's start. So why and when to use Triton? What is Triton? So um in very short Triton is a language um, that you can use to code your GPUs um, and it's way more con convenient than <clears throat> let's say CUDA and then CUDA. <laughs> um, you write Python-ish code which is then compiled down into PDX which is also the, the same stuff that CUDA also compiles too, so that, that's why you, you can um, target the same hardware um, as with CUDA. Um, during compilation, the Triton compiler actually tries to optimize your, your code. That means it um, rearranges parts of your code without making the code mean something else, but it will be f faster. Cool, so that's the very high level picture about uh, Triton. So how does it compare to CUDA? Um, the picture that you should have in mind is that CUDA, oh, so there's my mouse. <laughs> um, so the picture that you should have in mind is that CUDA is like a high-end camera. It has thousands of knobs, but you can get the very best performance performance that is possible, while Triton is more like a high-end smartphone c 
camera you cannot control everything um, so you will likely not get the, the absolute best perf performance but um, you, you, you'll very easily get very good per performance so as I said CUDA you, you can control everything but that makes it so, that makes it also harder to get decent per performance it's way more t t tedious to write and to debug and also to just you know to to, to get up to speed it's uh, more complicated while as Triton as I said you can control everything um, but that also means um, it's way easier to get good per performance and it's also way easier to write in debug and in my opinion it also easier to 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 get started with if you <clears throat> have dabbled into the topic of how to make um, your AI models fast. Um, you, you might also have come across this thing called Torch Compile. So what's Triton with the Torch Compile? Um, well, Torch Compile also makes the model faster, but um, Torch Compile uh, chain or, or, or um, optimizes your code, but not the kernels that your code use. So Triton, uh, uh, by me, I, I'm a Torch, Torch compile will um, change your code or optimize your code to uh, make best use of the kernels, of the GPU kernels that you have. And, and in some cases also write very simple uh, new kernels. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. Um, as a as a side note, um, those simple kernels that are, that Torch co compile writes um, are Triton kernels. So um, if you just want to get started, it um, might be a good idea to um, write your code in to um, in a PyTorch, use Torch compile, and, th and then you should have uh, Triton kernels. Or a Triton kernel for your code. Um, for the details, um, look into lecture one um, of the CUDA mode uh, series, which was done by Mark. <clears throat> um, by the way, if you uh, don't know, this notebook is also or can be found um, on the in the GitHub repository of CUDA mode. Um, all right. So when would you actually use Triton? So let's say you 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 know you start off and have your AI model. What um, what do you want to make it faster? Um, what do you do? Well, um, the the very first step is you use you, you use Torch compile you will be faster if after that you, you are still not fast enough you, you can think about if it's possible to rewrite your code such that it, it it's more suitable for for torch compile as an example <clears throat> torch um, compile uses or makes use of of something that's called CUDA graphs um, very, very, very shortly, um, I mean, very, very briefly, it means that um, multiple kernels or, or the, the intention to start multiple kernels is sent at the same time instead of after each, um, after another. Um, the details don't matter. The point is that if your code can be um, represented as one um, CUDA graph, then it will be very fast. So if you touch compile your code, and as an example, uh, notice it cannot be um, represented as one 
graph because you have something that's called a graph break then you could um, uh, s look into if it's um, if you can rewrite your code so it uh, doesn't have any any graph breaks and so it can be compiled into one graph so um, that's one example of um, adapting adapting your code so it makes it's more more suitable to torch compile um, if you do that it should also um, get 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 faster if after that it's still not fast enough um, I identify which parts of your code are actually slow and therefore those parts you can decide to write a custom Triton kernels if after all that <clears throat> you are still not fast enough then you can um, again identify which parts are too slow and if those um, parts already have Triton kernels then you, you can decide to invest time to, uh, to write actual CUDA kernels um, of course, if you know be, be, beforehand that you need absolute max performance, then of course you can start with CUDA. Cool. Um, a small side note um, on rough edges. So, a Triton is a new ish project, so there are some rough edges um, still. Sometimes um, the code uh, doesn't be like you would expect um, it does have those rough edges right now I of course expect that over time it will get a lot more polished uh, but it has those rough edges if I encountered them in my uh, you know in this notebook um, I've noted it cool so now we can start into how to write Triton kernels. So what's the actual process of writing Triton kernels? Um, unlike CUDA, what's cool about Triton is you can actually debug a Triton kernels just like any CPU program. Um, that's, uh, you can do so if you set in this uh, an environment variable, uh, Triton interpret to one. If you do so, um, um, a note it has to, to be a one, um, so not a number one, but a string one. Um, if you do so, then a Triton doesn't run your kernel code actually on the GPU, but it does so, um, but but uh, simulates um, it on the CPU. So. It 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 uh, behaves or it it pretends that it's on a GPU, but it's actually on the CPU. Um, that's very cool for debugging because it means um, you can very easily access it, interrupt it, uh, print stuff, and so on. And that's what we are going to uh, do. Um, so these are now a couple of uh, utility functions um, that I wrote and that I find very handy and, and you know of course you can just copy paste them into your code and um, um, <laughs> also very very important so that's actually um, I, I I want to put an next Exclamation mark after this point. I highly encourage you to um, write your kernels, write your kernels first in the simulator, and then uh, and uh, use tiny examples to check that your code is really correct, and then um, make it run on the on on the GPU. I know that um, people have said that uh, debugging in, in Triton is not possible, that it, it's a nightmare. Um, 
but I don't think so. I actually think it's uh, quite easy, and so I will hopefully con convince you that it is easy, and you should also do it. Um, cool. Getting back, so these are some you. Uh, utility functions I will not go into details but you know just to state it with, um, very concisely we check if all the data we get is um, is, is um, the way we want it to be so it can be used on the on the G P P U and also um, we we that we can s set breakpoints and and uh, uh, and uh, print stuff depending on which actual kernel we are right now on but then um, details as i said i don't matter too much cool um of course we need to import um, stuff for triton um i need to run this code actually where does it start okay yeah, so the code uh, starts here. Um, let's execute it. Cool, that's done. That's done. Triton is importing. Cool. So let's get to the programming model. That means, um, so what is a programming model? It means um, how does Triton want you to think about how to structure your, your program? So with CUDA, we have um, a two-tiered decomposition of the overall computation that we want to do. So we have the overall computation, and that's then decomposed into, into something called blocks. And then those are then also decomposed each into, into something called uh, threads. But excuse me. <coughs> um, cool. So, <clears throat> um, what's important is that each thread computes on a on a scalar value, so on one number. Then also, um, as you all um, know, if you are in the CUDA mode server, um, every thread in uh, in the same block, they run <coughs> they run on the same SM, so streaming multi processor, and they use the same sh uh, shared memory. And Triton, and uh, Triton does not have this two step uh, decomposition; it just has a one step decomposition. So this means your, your overall computation is decomposed into blocks, but it's not um, then also decomposed into threads. But, and that's the main essence of, of uh, Triton. Triton wants you to, or it, it, it requires you to um, do stuff not with scalars, but on vectors um, that's one and two um, because we don't have this further decomposition into into threads um, we have we cannot uh, um, manage sh 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 shared memory manually but we also don't have to you know um, uh, Triton doesn't that Cool. So make, make, uh, let's make a very simple example. Let's say we have two um, vectors x and y, um, both of size a. To we we want to add them into z, also size eight, and and you know just to the example, <coughs> let's use a block size of four. So we have eight by 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 four to um, blocks. So then in CUDA we would have you know two 
blocks and each of those would contain four threads and each thread then does computation on a single number <coughs> um, for example you know z um, zero equals x is zero plus plus y is zero um, but on triton uh, we also have two uh, blocks we have no threads um, and each block does stuff on multiple values eg z from 0 to 3 and equals x from 0 to 3 plus y plus um, y from 0 to 3 um very very important everything all ops in triton are factorized so the data loading the the the, the doing stuff on the data the storing data back the checking we are not um out of bounds it's all um factorized cool um Let's make one more very simple example. Um, now we also want to add um, x and y. And now they have size six. So now we um, still have two blocks as uh, six over four. Um, the next largest integer is two. And as an example, let's say we have these um, vectors. So um, if you um, wrote an, an addition kernel in, in in CUDA, we would get something like this. You know, as you know, CUDA um, is not written in in a Python, but in C. But you know, this code is um, gives an idea logically what the equivalent uh, C code in CUDA. What to do. So we start off by identifying which part of the overall computation this specific kernel um, is, is actually going to do. Um, so in our case, it's um, the block ID is either 0 or 1, as we have two blocks, and the, th the th thread ID is um something from one to uh <laughs> is, is is something from zero to three as we have per, per block per block for th for threads cool so now we know which part of the computation this kernel should do so now we can identify in the data and that we need to, to do that computation uh, check if the data is actually um, um, inside of the bound. Um, if yes, then we can then get the data, um, do the operation we want, and then uh, write the data back. Um, as I said, now in CUDA everything is an is a scalar. So in, uh, to 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 illustrate that. <clears throat> There's a table that shows for each um, thread in each block what are what are the, the the values of the variables. Cool. So that's how CUDA wants you to think about how to structure your your problem. But now we are we go on to Triton, and that's how Triton wants you to structure your your, your problems but um, you know just to just to say this 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 here is not quite correct Triton um, we will, will write correct Triton below but you know that's just to to to, to, to uh, illustrate the concepts so um it's almost the same actually we um identify which part which part of the comp 
computation um, this specific kernel um, is going to do we um, get the data we or we we'll locate the, the data that we need to do in the computation <clears throat> we check if we are inside bound we can get the data we do the something on the data we write the data back but very important is that everything is a vector so the location of the data is a vector the masks are is a vector and the mask is a vector the data we get are both vectors and we um, the output of our, our computation is vector and the data we write back, back is also a a a, a vector um, to illustrate that this this table shows for each of the two kernels um, each variable um, actually is you know has contains these content <laughs> oops and uh, yes so it's um, not as, as scalars it's a um, Sectors. Okay. Um, going on. Um, well, one a tiny note on the jargon. <clears throat> each kernel that so each each um each kernel um is is this should not be block. It should be kernel. Um, or each each kernel which processes a block um, it is called a program and so in, so in our example we have two um, and so therefore we don't call it block ID but we call it PID which is short for program ID <clears throat> okay <laughs> cool now we can actually get into writing actual Triton code um, let's make a very easy example so our task is to we want to copy a, a tensor uh, X of shape N into another tensor of uh, shape Z um, we will just like in CUDA um, we can launch the uh, if we have the kernel we can launch the kernel in Triton we can we uh, launch kernels or can launch them from Python um, so that's the code to do so it, it's a, it will be very um, um, or it will look very familiar to you if you um, uh, can do CUDA so we create the output um, uh, the space for the output uh, check that all our data is um, ready to go onto the GPU um, get the size of our data um, get yeah, these two functions um, tell you how many blocks um, we are go we are going to have the and the, that's called a the read uh, which can be a, a, either a one D two D or T D tuple or it can be a a, a function that, that read turns a 1D, 2D or, or, or 3D tuple. This line here is um, actually where the magic happens. Um, this line launches the kernels for each point in the grid. Um, yeah. Um, now we get to the actual code for the actual Triton kernel. Oops. <laughs> um, just to make a note, so for educational pur 
persistent this code has a bug. Um, it's not a uh, it's not a, a, a syntax bug. So this code is, is is going to run on the GPU, or in our case, as we are, as we are we are using the uh, simulator, it's going to pretend to run on the GPU. Um, but it has a logical bug and your task is to uh, I identify it. So um, how do I actually write the Triton kernel? Um, if we if, if, if write a Python function and we decorated it with Triton dot JIT, then this um, function is going to be compiled, uh, parsed, and then compiled into uh, Triton. Um, cool. <clears throat> so now that's the that's a kernel. It's important that you know above we passed uh, tensors, but now we don't get uh, tensors in, but we get uh, for each tensor get a pointer to the start of, of that tensor. Cool. Um, this tell const expression means we tell to write in, um, that in this um, number is not going to change, so it can optimize um, in its optimization. It can use the no uh, the the knowledge that um, that this number is not going to change. Cool. So. We locate, um, we identify which part of the computation we're going to do um, by getting the P ID. We compute then uh, which part um, we then locate um, the part of the data that we need. In our case, it's um, it's a range going from zero to the Block size. Um, again, it's a vector. We compute the mask. We get the data into the kernel, and you don't. You're not going to, to do any computation as the task is, is just copying the data. So we are going to just write exactly that data back, but into another location. Um, you know, and these X pointer plus offsets, um, don't worry too much about it. Um, actually, just uh, think about it as, um, uh, you know, X, uh, like X, accessing um, via index notation. Yeah, so in, um, let's say, in NumPy or in Petwatch, if you did that, then you would um, add offsets. Um, is a is a tensor, and then this whole thing is also a a, a tensor, and so the, the, that's also what's happening here. Cool. So we run this code. Um, I hope you, you might have spotted the bug. So let's run the code. Oops, it's not ah hey, um, copy isn't. Okay, why is copy not? That's weird. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so um, this line here. Okay, so um, let me run this code. And um, what's cool for debugging um, our utility function tells a uh, prints out for which block or in which block what uh, are the values of um, this um, the offsets and the mask index so um, as you notice um, every um, um, every kernel um, does the same stuff that's not what we want and that's, that's also what we notice when we, when we look at the output so um, only the 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 first um, two values were being 
copied that makes sense because you know the the block sizes too so we need um so our bug is that we um didn't locate the data that we need correctly of course it should somehow depend on the on which block we are so on the um we are in so on the p id okay cool so uh, uh, second try now we um offset you know this range by the pid multi number of elements let's do so and now it's also not quite right um you know now the offsets do change but not by the right amount aha uh -huh. we sh should not um advance by the total number of of uh, of um, data points n but we should advance by the block size um which is ps so we change that and now it should work right it does cool and yes x and z now have um have both the same contain both the same content <laughs> um cool so my main message to you at this point is um, you know of course not to write a basic kernel but also it's it's easy to do debugging in in uh, triton and especially if you do it interactively it's um uh, you know just do it <laughs> okay cool um, let's close this ch uh, uh, chapter and let's also close the chapter above okay so now we are going to uh, exit example two and we are going to restart the kernel here restart um why do we have to restart the kernel actually i don't know um i'll be honest i don't know um i just noticed that if i don't then um you know this happens um torch and vision can't be imported i don't know why but cool um and also uh, sadly an operation that we're going to need for this kernel um, doesn't right now work on the uh, uh, simulator so we cannot use it and so on that's why we also need to restart the kernel so so triton doesn't or is not or doesn't start in in a simulation mode um cool so this also means we need to run on the gpu so let's get a gpu good so now ex example two um, our goal is that we want to grayscale an image um we are now on the gpu we have restarted the kernel so let's do it um you know that's just code uh from that i copied from the example from jeremy howard's um, lecture um in the kuda mode server um yeah so and also jeremy chose this puppy as an example so we are also now going to use it um this puppy is now the in the official gpu puppy um <laughs> cool so um why are we going to do this specific example well this specific example is going to show you how you you can use uh or how you, you can um, do, do stuff on on 2d data like this you know um so um it's the basic same principle we get the data or i mean we locate which part of the computation we are doing 
they will locate uh, which data we need, get it, do stuff, write it back. So and uh, we check that we are in bounds. But now we have two the um, data and we can use two the uh, data locations, i.e., offsets uh, to the operations to the masking to to the um, writing back. Um, how? Well, to do so, let's make a make an example to do uh, to show how to build a a, a to the offset. In this example, we have a matrix which is uh, four times seven, and we want to get this part of the data. So, um, I think in this example we have a block size of two, and now we are in the second block in this um, axis, and in the third block in this. So that's the data we want to get. We, if you want to get it, we start by um, building the one-dimensional offsets, just like we did before. So here's the offset in the in a, in one direction. It's just you know this two and three, and the offset in the other direction, which is just uh, four and five. Now we can use um, non-indexing notation to uh, make it two D. So this is now a two by one matrix, and this is a one by two matrix. Um, but of course, we don't want the offset offset to be two. Two and three, we want them to indicate the actual data location of the row, so that's uh, 14 and uh, 21. But we can get that by just multiplying by the size of the row. Cool, so now we have this and that, we can just um, add them, and via broadcasting, we will get the um, locations that we. Found. Um, yes, so it's not that complicated. Um, in code, it's it's also ju just as easy. So now that's not the kernel for the gray scaling. Um, get our p IDs. So we get the one the mask. Uh, I mean the one the offsets just like above. Now we build um, the two d masks just like in the example we just uh, showed. Um, a tiny comment on um, a on a rough edge. Um, this notate. I mean, this stuff you no. <laughs> pardon me here. This notation you uh, right now cannot use if you are in the simulator. So um, if you use that, then use this expand dips function instead. Cool. But now um, that's a two D. Offset, we create now body masks, using them to create a 2D mask. Um, as you probably noticed, um, it's a bit different than how you build the 2D offset. That's, that's because uh, you independently check in, into each uh, or along each axis if you are out of bounds. So both you you must not go out of bounds along either the direction. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a, just an end. Cool. So now we have the masks and the offsets. We can load the data. As we know, um, uh, colored images um, are stored in such a way that you first have the data for one channel um, which is in the R channel, red, then G, green, then B for blue. So we start at our X pointer, so our um, first data point, then add the offsets um, and times how often we need to go through the the size of one 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 channel um so yeah that's how we get each data uh for uh, the data for each channel and now we 
and just use this this uh, formula to get the uh, grayscale value and we uh, write in this 2D data back into um, by choosing this 2D offset and checking this 2D mask. Um, also a uh, rough edges somehow right now on this GPU um, which is an older one um, you cannot multiply floats and the U ints um, but yeah cool so that's a kernel yep let's uh, run this kernel um, just a, a side note I've Told you a buff that you can that um, the grid parameter can actually be a double one D two D or or three D, or it can be a a function that outputs a one D two D or three D tuple. Um, just to show, uh, just to show it in this example, I've used a function, you know. But in this specific example, it doesn't make or it, it's not really beneficial to use a function and we could easily have pre-computed uh, pre the output and just passed the, the tuple but there, there are cases where it is useful and those cases will be um, below um, when the benchmark and auto uh, and auto tune but Cool. Um, uh, also, uh, the the arguments passed into this uh, function are um, all the keyword arguments um, that we have, uh, plus all the extra arguments coming from benchmarking and, and auto tuning. Cool. Let's run the code, and we will see that we have an gray GPU puppy. All right, cool. Um, let's go to the next example, which is matrix multiplication. For matrix multiplication, I uh, don't have, or we don't have to restart the kernel. Yes, yeah, so for matrix multiplication, application we don't have to restart the kernel uh, but you know just to make our code simpler um, uh, we will just restart it here also I've moved all the functions of uh, uh, all the all the utility functions in its own uh, file just to be cleaner okay so why are we going um, to do this ex example um, this example is going to sh sh show us how we can split up computation. You know, as you know, with GPUs we split large computations into smaller chunks, um, and we, as a coder, have to decide um, how we should do the uh, decomposition. And now we're going to get. Um, we are going to uh, see one way, and also we are going to learn how we can use uh, um, actually f um, how we can use uh, other functions, how we can call them from our kernel, and also we'll um, see that we can do uh, on that inside each kernel we can do some matrix um, and uh, vector. Uh, operations um, because Triton provides them to us. Okay, so um, our our goal is we, we want to multiply the M by K matrix A and the K by N matrix B into the M by N matrix C. So how do we split up the computation? In this case, we'll kind of do it uh, threefold. 
um, the first two poles are going to be that you know we are going to compute this output matrix and we're going to split this output matrix along each dimension and these two splits will be um, mapped onto the blocks. So this means if we change the blocks on so this might be block one one and this block one two so if we change blocks then we're going to uh, change um, you know here which part along this axis we are computing uh, so that's um, that's two and then three and that's something uh, s s s something we're not going to present by a by a separate block uh, it is that you know as an example to compute this part we need to uh, multiply this part times this part um, we will decompose each um, further so we will multiply what's what's labeled as phase one uh, uh, I mean phase zero of the a matrix time phase uh, uh, zero of the B matrix and then phase one of the A and B matrix and add them uh, together to get this output for this block. Uh, yes, for this block, which is um, this example. You might ask, hey, Uma. I mean, we can use uh, 3D tuples in uh, uh, for the grid in Triton, and we are splitting up the computation now um, uh, threefold. Why don't we, you know, map those onto each other? Why isn't this a uh, thing on the right not a block? Um, the answer is that you know for this part um each you know uh, 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 phase zero and uh, f f phase one depend on each other so uh, to get this output i need to have the output of uh, phases uh, so to get a total output of this block i need the output of what's now called phases zero and um, phase one so these are not independent that's why all right we have split up the computation um on we have decided how we want to split up the computation um you know uh, making 1d and 2d masks and offsets is is just, is just something that uh, that we are going to use very often so i've made some um, I've 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 um, um, put that into uh, uh, functions, and in those functions we will be able to call inside our kernel, because if you have a function that's also tried and jitted, then this function can be called from other tried and jitted functions. Cool. So now let's go on to the naive matrix multiplication. So in the example we showed above, and this should be you know should not be uh, that <laughs> large of surprise to you. We get um, our PIDs, we get uh, the offsets along the M and the N axis. Oops, there we go. For each uh, axis of for each offset we need to know in which block we are and then we also chunk up the x axis so that's uh, you know this this chunking um but we, we we don't need to know which block we are in because in each block we will start with the uh, first phase and and then go 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 through all the phases um, cool. So we um, have the 1D offsets um, by 
using them, we make our 2D offsets. Um, cool. And now we will um, iterate uh, through each of the uh, phases and um, do a matrix multiplication for that phase and then um, accumulate it. Cool. Um, yes, yeah, so we load the data, we multiply it, and that's what I wanted to show you, that inside a kernel there, there are pre-implemented uh, matrix vector ops that we can use. Um, this test has to be set to uh, false to on, on, on older G Use. and cool so now we have um, this um, we added the new accumulation step back to the accumulator and we then go to the next uh, phase along K along the K axis um, my comment says don't we need masking when we load A and B actually I Think yes, um, yeah, but <laughs> it's not here. <laughs> um, okay, so let's run this. I don't know if you run this actually. No, we did not. Let's just restart the kernel. So this should be cell number one that is being run. Yep, cool. So we go on two, three. Now we have this uh, um, Python function. Didn't they have a call on matrix multi multiplication. It's not really, it, you know, it's not complicated. Cool. Um, let's do an, a very basic example. We have two matrices, uh, three times four and uh, four by five, which all have just, you know, uh, a one at each location. And so each and the output should be a matrix of size uh, three by five where each cell uh, is the sum of ones but k times so it's uh, four do we get that we do <laughs> yay <laughs> cool and let's also just uh, just uh, just uh, make a larger and random example to test against the PyTorch implementation and um, they, they, they do match, so that's cool. All right, um, that was naive matrix multiplication. Let's go on. Let us um, do uh, faster matrix multiplication. Okay, so <clears throat> how can we make a kernel faster. Um, what options do we have? Uh, one option is that, um, or which knobs do we have? Uh, one knob is that we can uh, re or that we can choose the ordering of our blocks. Um, yes. And by doing so, we have influence over um, in which order memory is accessed. So um, we get very concrete um, in in just a minute. But you know, uh, we we cannot decide how memory is accessed inside a block you know and that is uh, something that triton handles automatically but we can decide how memory is accessed across uh, blocks and if, if you do so then we can um, increase the l2 cache tit rate um, and so we need uh, we don't need to load as much data um, so we will be uh, faster so why is it, da, 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 da. Oh, wait, 
Uh, yeah, right. So um, if he if he produces um, data y. Okay, I'm not. This is um, having a blackout in just a moment. Never like the my not better use of the word. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so okay. So uh, cool. We want want to increase the the change that uh, data and uh, that we need in the kernel is already in the L two cache. Um, so load the load will be uh, faster. How can we do it? Well, we can do it by re Using the number of, of different data loads by I called it con consecutive kernels. By by consecutive I mean you know kernels that run around the around the same time. Um, cool. You know because as an example. I have two blocks, um, one and two, and uh, block two needs the same data as um, block one, and one is already executing. Then the the data will already be in the L two cache, so two can just use that. Cool. Um, how can we use that in a context of matrix multiplication? Well, um, th this is. Uh, if if you uh, do naive matrix multiplication, um, we compute the the first um, row in this case ten blocks. Um, <laughs> okay, it, it, it's not that actually ten. It's a. Uh, uh, it's not nine; it's a ten. But then let's just say it's a nine. So, um, so let's pretend it's a nine by nine matrix and not a ten by ten matrix. So to compute the first row, which is nine blocks, we need to load nine blocks from matrix A, but all rows from matrix B. So eighty-one blocks. So in total, we need ninety. Uh, blocks. Um, you know, we need to read ninety different blocks to compute the nine blocks in the top row um, with our naive ordering. And our another approach is that we compute the top right uh, three by th uh, three blocks. To, which are also nine blocks, um, and to compute those, we need we need the first three rows and the first of A and the three first columns of B. So in total, fifty four blocks. A side note: um, this grouping is called super grouping in the Triton documentation. Okay, so how can we tell Triton which in which order to process each block? Well, we take the P ID, change them, and, and then just pretend that it's not the, the changed P ID. I E V choose it as if it 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 was the the normal ones. Um, to illustrate this, a very easy. Example, so um, if you go f uh, in the range f uh, from f from from zero to four, and uh, and execute in this, we uh, process each item sequentially, and now we can have this change ID function, which uh, maps you know uh, re which re versus the order but if you just um, use it as if it's the original um, ID we 
process in the reverse order. Cool, so now the question is, um, what PID changing function do we need to get from this ordering to this one? And uh, so we need one that uh, changes these P PIDs into these. What does this um, block, uh, I mean, this, uh, this um, picture on the right, on the, on the left actually mean? You know, um, this is a five by, by seven matrix, so we have five times uh, seven equals uh, 35 cells. But again, in Triton, we, we can just, uh, we don't operate on the scalars in the cells, but on the vectors in the blocks. So these uh, show the blocks. So these two cells are one block and we have in total 20 bl bl blocks. Cool, so we want to um, start by going in, if we if we group together these these three rows um, and go down the rows in them and then go into the next column go down again then the next column and so on we notice that the first nine processed blocks are the top left three by three matrix uh, 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 I mean three by three square so that's actually what we need um, the number of rows that you group together is is something you can choose it's called the group size and um, this this uh, the function that that maps this matrix to this matrix um, or the operation that it does so is called uh, is called uh, swizzling i think that, that term comes from the computer graphics cool so how do we actually swizzle um do we have to write our own uh, function no we don't because triton um provides this uh, swizzle to the function um what i like to do is to actually check if i understand this function by choosing it in a very simple example and then afterwards in the actual example so let's uh, first make make sure we understand these this function swizzle 2d <clears throat> so we are going to have a have a side goal that we are going to start by a five by five by four matrix again 20 cells where each cell co contains the the row majoring location of that cell so the row major location is you know just this ordering so uh, you know uh, in this matrix the row order location of uh, this block would be uh, uh, 3 and here it, it would be 13 so actually this matrix here that I'm describing is exactly this one <laughs> And we want to transform it from the, uh, this matrix into this matrix. Um, the details of this code, uh, this code don't matter, matter too much. It's just you know we the stuff we always do. Uh, this line changes in the old PIDs into a new. PIDs, and then we write 
and back the data at the location of, of the new PIDs by using by, by, by to write the um, okay, I'm just not gonna go to in details. The point is, it gives us a, exactly what we want. So uh, Twizzling does exactly what, what we want it to. Cool. <clears throat> okay, now I'm now a bit curious. It, it's my code, I should understand my code. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we get a P IDs, the number of blocks we we, we uh, twizzle, get the offsets, uh, offsets to D, the mask, and this is all untwizzled. Then we also get the offsets at the mask of the twizzled, um, or um, using the 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 twizzled PIDs. Now we load the data based on the unt on the untwizzled um, location, but we r r write the same data back using the uh, uh, twizzled locations. Okay, good. So that makes sense. Cool. So in this example, we would take this uh, three and we would write it back into this location. Cool. So we know that that uh, twizzling uh, behaves like we wanted to. That's good. And now we can write our faster matrix multiplication which is exactly the Naishan matrix multiplication, but uh, we added just this line, which does the twizzling. And also for this uh, twizzling, we need to know the number of blocks we have and that we can get with this command. All right. So um, th that's our grouped matrix multiplication kernel. Let's also test that one. It um, looks good and also um, test it against PyTorch also looks good. Cool. <laughs> so those are all the examples. We started very easily and now we um, have done some, have done some really cool stuff. Let's get to benchmarking um, because we, we, of course, want to know if we are actually fast and, and how fast. Um, as the goal is to make our models uh, fast. So um, Triton provides built-in benchmarking tools. I will not go that much into this code. Uh, just know you can uh, you can provide a uh, different um, uh, functions that you want to benchmark and you can write, uh, you, you can provide uh, over which r r r range of values you, you want to benchmark them. Um, I'm not going to run the code um, as it takes some time, um, but to see if we if our uh, our task is square matrix multiplication, and we ch change the the size of, of, of the matrix multi multiplication, we uh, notice that for smaller matrices, um, our kernels are actually faster than the PyTorch kernels, uh, but for larger uh, matrices. Patrick is uh, way, uh, way, way faster. Um, as for why, or when I got this uh, uh, plot, I asked myself why um, do all, all uh, performances drop after some point? And uh, someone in the 
Kuno mode chat said it might be because the L1 or L2 cache is just uh, full after, after uh, some point. So the kernels need to do um, much more memory sh uh, shuffling. Yeah. Right. So now we can also look. Okay, we had um, different blocks, or we have the blocks size which it can change, which impact doesn't 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 that have. Well, we notice uh, it's not batch size; it should be block size. So we notice that the larger the larger the block size, the better. If you still make it larger than uh, this uh, GPU runs into um, out of memory. Yeah. Um, cool. So now let's plot the same graph, but now for the best block size, I the largest one, and we notice cool. Um, now actually for faster. Uh, I mean, for larger matrices, um, our the performance of our kernels much more closely matches that of PyTorch. But interestingly, uh, for smaller matrix sizes, now torches wave uh, wave uh, faster. Cool. <clears throat> that for benchmarking. And another tip which I found very very helpful is that you can use the in, in, inside compute, so um, which is called the N, uh, uh, NCU profiler, and to get uh, to get hints about um, how to make your kernels even uh, faster. All right, let's get to auto tuning. That's the last uh, chapter. <clears throat> okay, so the idea of auto-tuning auto is that there are some uh, parameters and uh, configs that have no logical impact on the problem. So as an example, if you do matrix multiplication, uh, the block size itself should not change the output of the matrix um, the block the block size is just an implementation detail in try so this means we, we can actually look in, into which configs uh, make our, our matrix much application the 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 fastest and for for that Triton also provides um, tools I will not go in that much into detail but you can provide configs that are then uh, going to be tested out uh, yeah if your problem size changes you know it, in our, in our matrix multiplication, um, the problem sizes are M, N, and K, you know, because of those define the, the, the matrix multiplication pr problem, um, then this auto tune is, is going to, to be run again for the new pr problem size. So that's, um, as this is also a deck Greater just you know when you when this kernel is is, is run for the uh, first time, it's first compiled and it's then auto tuned. Cool. So th this is a grouped auto tuned um, kernel. No, it's a um, that one, but uh, that's the Python function that c calls it. Um, we cannot pass these parameters now as they are being auto-tuned and we get the same answer. Cool. Um, for more 
tips and tricks on how to um, how to choose these contracts I recommend in this talk also from Mark. Cool. And of course we cannot benchmark with the auto-tuned um, version. And this is very interesting um, because I would have expected that the auto-tuned version can be slower than the normal version. So I'm kind of surprised by this result. If you know why that that is the case, um, please uh, tell me on, on, on uh, Twitter. Cool, good job. <laughs> yeah, so uh, congrats, you have made it uh, through the tutorial. You, you, you can give yourself a large clap on the back. And also here are some more um, resources that you can use to go on in your Triton journey. And lastly, uh, one one more so, so side note, so yeah, that's me. Um, I'm an independent um, uh, ML engineer, so um, who does open source stuff. So if you want to buy, buy me a coffee, that's highly appreciated and then there's link cool so um, that's all uh, thanks a lot and bye bye